Welcome to the Rebel Love Show, where we are a once-a-week broadcast from Manchester, New Hampshire, where we are pro-pot, pro-gun, and pro-coffee. Uh, you can find all of our content on Voluntary Virtues Network. We're also on iTunes, Stitcher, and uh, YouTube, and also go to rebelloveshow.com. I am Rob Mathias. And I am Shire Dude. And today we have a great guest, a musical guest in studio, none other than Jordan Page. What's up, guys? Yeah, How's it going? Now... To those people listening at home, this is an impromptu radio recording because we ran into uh, Jordan in uh, at the Shire Co-op Market Day, and uh, it's not every day that a musician of his stature is in town, so we had to take advantage I'm of it. I'm only 5'9". You're only 5'9"? <laughs> you, 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 look, you look taller on camera. <laughs> uh, so anyways... Uh, why are you uh, coming through uh, New Hampshire right now? Well, guys, I'm doing uh, I'm doing a tour uh, up here in the Northeast. Uh, I I had to get back up here. I love it up here. New Hampshire is just it feels like second home to me. I got a lot of a lot of friends up here, a lot of fans, and um, I, I flew into Maine on Thursday and did a show up uh, up near Bangor, and then came down here uh, to do. I, I went down to Massachusetts last night to play a show in Worcester at the uh, Farewell to the Liberty Clubhouse there on Grafton Street. We had a lot of a lot of events there, like Liberty Love Fests and. This was like kind of the unofficial Liberty Love Fest Five last night in Worcester, and tonight I'm playing in Conte uh, Cook. I think that's how you pronounce it in New Hampshire. It's just 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 outside Manchester, and um, at uh, it's like a house concert. Uh, Ron Noyes, uh, very very well known musician, is hosting me there, and uh, and then tomorrow I'm down in Colchester, Connecticut. Uh, head back to to Indiana on uh, on Monday, and then I go almost immediately to Maryland. I'm playing a big show at the uh, Avalon Theater. Uh, on the on the eastern shore of Maryland, which is like a historic theater, so I've got a lot of shows right now. And busy guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. man, this very very busy. Yeah. Well, how how would you um, describe your sound to someone who's like never heard your stuff before? You know, it's it's just uh, a roundhouse kick to the face of the status scumbag establishment in Washington. You know, I mean, it, it's um, I, I I do a mixture of of rock and and folk music, um, and even some southern rock influences too. Uh, I don't like to. I mean, it's it's no musician likes to categorize himself, but you have to to yeah. you know to help people get acclimated. Um, you know, I, it, it's like you know Bob Dylan meets Metallica. That's what I say. You know, <laughs> oh, with with, with uh, you know, libertarian anarchist uh, message. Um, you know, I, I did a lot of uh, shows with with uh, Dr. Paul during the presidential campaign and before and after, and uh, so a lot of people know me from from working with him and. And uh, and all the, a lot, I do a lot, lot of work with different organizations like Oath Keepers and um, and and d and different political advocacy groups, civic civic advocacy groups, and 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 I and I, I just have a I have a national fan base, and I just travel all over playing shows for them, trying to keep the the liberty movement you know invigorated and alive and 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 moving and you know lubricated and <laughs> you know have a, have yeah. a really you know. I, I have a great time touring. Um, I do a lot of uh, of intimate shows, like house concerts now, uh, for for the for the local groups, like the what we, what the, we call the remnant, the people who are still fighting and haven't you know hung up their boxing gloves, so to speak, and uh, and, and and trying to bring new people in as well. So so this is uh, you know I, I had to get to the no northeast. If I didn't do it now before it gets too cold, with the polar vortex coming. Um, I wasn't going to get up here till probably April or May, and, and, and so I wanted to make sure I got to see everybody. Now, the, the, well, the whole thing with Polar Vortex, it's going to be a lot colder in Indiana than it would be probably over here. Yeah, it's going to be ridiculous in Indiana. Yeah, <laughs> I, uh, I'm, well, I'm from Chicago, so like I'm yeah. well aware of like the weather out there. I remember yeah. I moved here uh, January 25th, right during that whole Polar Vortex. It was negative 40, uh, negative 40, <laughs> negative 40 <laughs> wind chills. I landed here, and it was 30 degrees. I'm like, this is like a tropical heat wave. <laughs> you know? I'm like, this is like great weather. Like, What are people talking about bad winters? in new hampshire like yeah, you know yeah. try the midwest sure you know um but anyways you want to open up with uh with a song yeah sure you saw on this tour i've been doing a lot of um a lot of my new material and i've got a lot i've got a, you know enough songs for for i got like 17 new songs for this new album wow i'm um, still trying to put together the budget for it and hopefully it'll be out like early next year um but this is this is the the most recent song that i've done it's called modus operandi okay. and it came about because I, I had the idea to, you know, all, all my songs come from the perspective, you know, from my perspective, or from the, the perspective of the people, you know, raging against the state and uh, or, or, or asking questions of our fellow men uh, and women, like uh, the, the fellow citizens of this country, like, you know, why are you doing nothing while these, you know, status scumbags are taking away your freedoms? You're just kind of watching TV and not paying attention. 
and, and so I, I ask a lot of questions in my songs. But this was my first attempt at trying to get inside the mindset of the, the statist establishment and see where they're coming from. And the, the narrative that I found was this very dark and condescending and, and semi-sarcastic, disapproving, psychotic parental voice. And, uh, and, and I, I love the song. Even though it's really scary, I love the song. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. All right. <laughs> Go for it, man. Rock it. Save your questions for the end, my dear. Be patient, wait in line. No reason here to hurry, so don't worry. Take your time. Don't be frightened, don't concern yourself. Don't speak or raise alarm. Don't question, keep your head down. Just be still and serve the farm. You've got to follow orders to the letter of the state. Never mind your inner conscience. No room to hesitate. Trust you will comply It's all for your protection Pay your homage to the state Never mind your inner conscience No room to hesitate
absolutely beautiful. Oh my God. That was amazing. <laughs> that was Thank crazy. You, you've definitely gone uh, a lot more uh, anti-state compared to where you began in your early uh, work. Well, you know, I lost I lost my mic feed a little bit. I can't. Uh, oh, there you go. Test one. Yeah, there, I, I turned it down just a little bit during the during the because uh, it was cracking a couple of times. That's why I just turned it down okay. just a little bit when you were playing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I um, you know, when I first started out. You know, I had this I, I, I had this epiphany. I wrote this song that in the middle of the night it was called Pendulum. I've I've played it, you know, everybody knows this song who knows me and you know, I didn't understand what the song was about when I wrote it and it was kind of like a I, it was like a gift I was given in the middle of the night. Like I I didn't understand the references in it, but there's a lot of real things in it. The Federal Reserve's in it, Ron Paul's in it, you know, George Bush is in the song. I mean there's all this stuff that's going on at the end of two thousand six and, and it was just like this I was an I was a politically illiterate person at the time and, and and I was like any any other you know sheeple out there, and 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 the song is what prompted me to go start looking and and researching and and figuring out what's really going on and reading the right books and talking to people about you know the the issues and and, and not just what's going on in my little microcosm. And so uh, in the beginning, it seemed pretty clear to me that you know restoring the republic was the you know w was the thing to do. It was like the Constitution, man. I mean, come on, yeah. it's the Constitution. And, and and not that I you know you know treat the Constitution like it's a piece of garbage either, but it's not you know, to to me it's not what the goal is. You know, exactly. The, 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 like like I I've come to this conclusion, and there's people that disagree here, but not here, but in general. Well, I, I was gonna say I'm I used to be a restored republic person. Yeah, I was a I'm, constitutionalist. I, I, I used to be a while. huge constitutionalist. Yeah, yeah. Con uh, Ron Paul restored republic. I'm still a huge Ron Paul guy, but I'm, sure, I'm, me too. I'm not a. I'm not a restore republic guy anymore. Well, I don't think that there's anything to restore it to. Yeah. I don't think there was ever a golden age of liberty that w w it, it, there's a time that we should take it back to. Because if we take it backwards to wherever, we, you know, this mythical time, it's always just going to end up right back where we are now. Yeah. It's like Spooner said, you know, the Constitution either failed to prevent it or was the cause of this situation in the first place. And, and there's a lot of truth in that. You know, if you really read the Constitution— you know, it, it just, you know, it, it's, it's a list of things the government well, can't do. We, well, yeah, but Article 1, Section 8 is just nothing but everything that Congress can do. Can do, exactly. Yeah, and that, that's the worst part of the entire uh, document. I mean, I love the Bill of Rights. Bill of Rights are amazing. Well, sure. Except for the part where they can steal your property and give you just compensation <laughs> for it. But that, besides, yeah. besides that little nugget in, the, sure. um, in there, other than that, like, yeah, Article 1, Section 8 is like, the part I have a huge disdain for. My, my biggest problem with it is, are, are the necessary and proper clause, the supremacy clause, general welfare clauses, because those are all those are are giant loopholes yeah. that the government can use as justification to deprive you of your rights and property. How – okay, so you used to be a constitutionalist, correct? Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I used to be. Okay. But, I, but, but, but you know, at the same time, I still support folks who are fighting to restore, to, to restore the power of the Constitution because they're, they're – like we are dealing with a tyrannical state. You cannot. I mean, like we we can pretend it's not there. We we can create, you know, like su like subcultures that 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 render it irrelevant in our own lives. But but there's going to come a point where the violence of the state is going to come to our front door. Like like it's just it permeates every part of our culture, every, every part of every every system of control that governs our lives. You know, whether we acknowledge them or not, whether we say we're you know that doesn't control me or not, it still affects us in, even indirectly. And so. You know, the folks that are trying to limit government power, who are, who are trying to, you know, like make the government use the Constitution, you know, for, for me, that's still a worthwhile cause to a degree because, for me, anything that's taking us in the opposite direction of where we're going is, is a step in the right direction. Whether, whether, like, the constitutional, you know, folks, you know, their idea of liberty is probably very different than mine, yeah. you know, but it's, it, it, it's at least in the same general direction. You know, in the opposite direction of where we're heading, because the way we're the way we're heading is a very dark road, and 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 people have gone down that road in our very recent past. We know what happens. It's ugly. It's it's horrifying. It's war. It's 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 murder, genocide. Like this is not what we want to see happen. I've got five children. I'm trying to create a world that's 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 going to be a good place for them. You know, I I don't want to take America backwards. I want to take America forwards into into a. Uh, you know, a, a real age of liberty and a culture of liberty, not just a liberty movement. Is that why you play your music? Absolutely. I mean, like, I, I've always been a musician. Music, music is the central character in my life. You know, it's a central driving force, always has been, since I was a little boy. I mean, I was, you know, five, five six years old listening to records on my little Fisher-Price record player. You know, I, music has always been, you know, who, like what I was about. But it wasn't until I was in my mid-20s when I had this, this epiphany that, you know, I could actually do something, you know, non-self-gratifying with this music like 
uh, so much music is, like, and, and so many musicians I know, um, you know, like like m- music is an addictive activity. It's it's it the, like the, there there are there are feelings you get. There there's there's highs you get from it, natural highs you get from it. That once you once you have a taste of that, you just you got to have more. Um, it's also an amazing way to connect with other people. And I am, I love people. I'm a people person. I'm very social. And this is a way that I can connect with people, and make friends, and 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 and, and build my build my global family. But it's also a tool for social change, and it always has been. But the music industry itself has been taken over by the same folks that you know have taken over the mainstream media, the fa- yeah. same folks that that that, that uh, own the banking cartels, that that, that you know the sa- the same folks that are causing all the ma- all the problems politically, are have have recognized the power of of art and music as a, as a tool to control people's minds, to control the culture, and to make it a culture that's accepting of tyranny. Well, one thing I love about the Liberty community is that we it seems like especially with your music and other people like we're building our own cultural identity absolutely you know and uh, it's not something that a lot of people really realize but like the whole liberty community in general everything about us like the way we talk to each other like the artwork that we have like the music we listen to a lot of it is building up our own cultural identity uh within like the state you know within like this prison that we're in or whatever you want to call it we're building up this uh community but we we're, we want to have an identity to that community you know it's not like we're like an immigrant group or something like that where we're kind of bringing an identity with us we have to literally build our own identity sure. and like music like yours and like other stuff like we're we're building that identity for us absolutely and and i see it growing all the time the more people you know are are, are waking up uh you know it's well it, it's interesting the, the, the faster people wake up the faster the you know global elite accelerate their plans for world domination you know, they, they see how many people are, are, are wise to their act now. And, and that's why you see all these horrifying laws being passed. Boom, 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 boom. And, and that's why you see the militarization and federalization of police all over the country. Like they're, they're building an army. They're, they're stockpiling weapons and ammunition because they know what's coming. They're, you know, they're, these are the people that are you know, purposefully causing all the problems and the collapse, the impending collapse that's coming with the dollar. They know how bad it's going to get, and they're preparing for it. But so are we. So here's here's a question for you then. Um, now I I see the writing on the wall. I, I see what's going to happen uh, down the future. I mean I'm here for the Free State Project just because I feel like this is the last best hope in in the planet really to do to stand up and try and like build a community that's against the the coercion of the state, the authority of the state. Um, but that being said, like I could leave. I could leave the country. I can go to like Costa Rica or New Zealand or you know Argentina. Well not Argentina, but like Chile or something like that. Go down to South America and just like you know, live out my life and not stand for something like. Sure. What keeps you here? Why Why are you still here? Why haven't you left? Oh, wow, what a question! I've thought about it. If I mean, being, we all do. I'm we being, all think yeah. about leaving. Like, just I mean, there's a lot of people that like are very liberty minded that like, they they go south the board. They just leave. I don't think it's a sense of like patriotism. I'm not 100 percent sure what that is. Because I don't identify with 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 the flag, you know. I don't identify. I yeah. actually, you know. So I, I I have a disdain for the American flag, personally. Well, then I have a song I'm gonna play for you, personally. Good. Okay. <laughs> I do have um, a request later on as well for a song. All right, right on, all right, right on. I um, I feel like you know I, I'm a very spiritual person. Uh, I I and I I have uh, some very strong callings that I've all that I've always felt, but uh, that didn't have the the context until. You know, un- until I became an activist, until until I you know embraced this this philosophy, this you know ideological you know philosophy, and I um I I feel like I'm meant to be here. I'm I'm meant to be fighting these people. I'm I'm, I'm meant to be waking people up. Like that's what I'm here to do. You know, if, if I if I were to leave, I mean, like I I'm more tempted to leave to 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 spare my children having to grow up in in, in a in a civil war. You know, like I I, I mean. Uh, of all different kinds, whether it's racial or resource based or, you know, you know, us versus them, uh, you know, wh- whatever it's going to end up being. It may be it may be an amalgamation of all those things and, and more things that I can't see. But, I, you know, I, I, I I'm I'm so immersed in, in this in this fight so that my children don't have to be. But part of me knows they're going to have to be no matter what. Because yeah. th- 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 this thing, this situation didn't create itself overnight. It happened over generations. It's going to take generations to undo it. You know, Am- America you know to 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 the world has become has come to mean something different than what it has meant traditionally to folks it's 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 been a beacon of light for folks for a long time but you know you know s- since its inception however it's now become 
synonymous with you know the the arrogant oppressor you know the 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 invading army i mean like ha we have bases in 190 some countries all over the world i mean that that is an empire no matter how you want to spin it that's an empire it's a military empire we have a military democratic dictatorship I mean, and yeah. that, that that is what we have we, we do not have a representative democracy we did we sure don't have a republic anymore i mean that was that was lost a long time ago and you know i you know, I, 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 am, I, I personally know that I'm, I'm here to fight this fight, whatever that means, you know, and, and I'm okay with that, you know, because we, we all, everyone has to die. Everyone has to go through their journey in life and learn the lessons that they're here to learn. You know, I, I have been given ample proof, you know, by the creator that this is what I'm here to do. Every time I start to doubt, you know, maybe, maybe we should just get the hell out of here. All the, you know, I will get a sign that I'm meant to stay. And that, that, that this is what I'm supposed to do. You know, my, my, my voice carries to, to, to the, you know, these people. And these are the people that are going to be the leaders when, when everything falls apart. You know, Ron, Ron Paul himself, you know, his goal, I think, was to create an army of leaders. You know, I, but I mean, I think he, he created an army of, of activists for sure. Well, absolutely. I mean, most people in the FSP, most people in the liberal community in general, woke, well, I would say about half of them have been woken up because of Ron Paul. I'm one of those people. I went down the whole liberty rabbit hole because of Ron Paul. Sure. So I, I went down the exact same similar uh, uh, journey as most people like yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I discovered Ron Paul about a year after I woke up. And he was such a pleasant surprise to me because, you know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm thinking that we have to solve this this problem with with politics and all that at the time. And, and I'm just like, there's actually a, a congressman who's for real. and He's not a complete and utter douche. Wow, this is amazing. <laughs> this is awesome. I want to get to know this guy. And, uh, you know, I, I, I but but he, he even he said in his farewell speech, the Constitution has failed. You know, where we have become an immoral people, you know, like the Constitution doesn't work and, and we have not stood up for ourselves. And, and that we are afraid of our government instead of the other way around. See, I came from, I, I found Ron Paul during my journey of waking up, but he wasn't like my red pill moment. A lot of people have a red pill moment. Sure. Uh, for me, it was uh, a loose change. I watched Loose Change like oh, 2006, do 2007. I'm like, I didn't want to believe it. I didn't want to believe it because I was very patriotic then. I was, I was proud to be an American and all that jazz and, you know, and uh, – I, I kept doing research on like what this can't be right this can't be true and I started going like looking up other research and trying to figure this out along my journey I I, I found um, found Alex Jones documentaries and then I found Alex Jones listen to him he had Ron Paul on I'm like oh my god who the heck is this congressman Ron Paul you know and then from there I just kept going down and down the rabbit hole until somehow I landed here in Manchester like that's that's been my journey for like the last like six years and you're exactly where you're supposed to be man. yes absolutely I I feel like I finally belong somewhere on uh, on this planet so on this in this world that's yeah pretty amazing yeah it's uh it's been a it's been a journey but like the last year I've been here has been absolutely incredible I feel like I'm finally living the life I'm supposed to be living not just existing and paying attention to what's going on. That's fantastic. That makes my day to hear that, man. That's awesome. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> well, your music actually helped through that transition a little bit as oh, well. That's I used all. to that's listen to it. And by the way, Lauren sitting next to you, I introduced your music to her. So just yeah. let, letting you know that. Nice. Well, yeah, well yeah. thanks for that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> let me know. Yeah. Yes. No, I remember the exact moment yeah. when I introduced <laughs> it to you. Oh, Whatever. Here we go. If you say so. I don't even know who Steve is. What, what about you, buddy? Shire dude, how did you how did you uh, come to come to these conclusions? Oh well, yeah. I mean, uh, Ron Paul played a major role mm -hmm. in it. Um, my my story is pretty much the same as Rob's in a lot of ways. I didn't I didn't ever do the Alex Jones thing though. I I I, uh, I guess that was a little before my time. Before your time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you put him in your videos. Yeah, I know because he's <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> you, if you ever get a chance, watch oh, man. watch Shire Dude. He's yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> and uh, I I make fun of Alex Jones a lot. Like you know, I, I make fun of him a lot, but I make fun of Ron Paul too. And you you can't really completely disassociate from whatever r wing of you know whatever we are. You can't really disassociate from those people. Like objectivists. Some people just say, "Oh, those crazy objectivists." You know, whatever they'll do, whatever. But that is a path to liberty, like just like Alex Jones, just like Ron Paul, just like anything, you know. So, um, it there's lots of paths. There's lots of there's ways. So many, yeah. And, and everybody's got their own idea of what liberty is, what freedom is, right? You know? and, and, and I don't personally care what anybody else's idea is. I know what it is for me, 
and, and, and I just I want everybody to be able to do what they want to do as long as they're abiding by the non-aggression principle. Yeah, we're all riding the same train. Yeah, exactly. So, mm-hmm. so as long as we're heading in that direction, I'm good. Because I don't personally, I mean, I, could, I can dream, I can hope that, that we're going to you know, reach it in my lifetime, but I don't think so. Um, I, I think that we have, th- there's so much work to do. Um, but I want to, uh, but I want to set it up for my children. I want, I want their, my children and their children to see it. And, and that's, that's really my goal. I mean, I, I love them more than I love myself. And, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, be part of something bigger than me that, that, that's doing something positive for, for our culture. Well, for me, it's like one of those things where once you see the truth, you know, once you see what the world really is around you. Do you hide or do you stand up to it? You know, do you? Well, it's st- a choice. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a definitely a choice. But a lot, some people don't make that choice. They they'll make it the wrong choice and like go hide. Um, I wouldn't be able to sleep with myself at night knowing what's out there, not knowing that I'm doing something. Like this whole point of this show, like for me, I I do this just because I want to be able to somehow show what the people that actually live in the Liberty community around the country and here are like, like the 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 culture of it you know that's sure. kind of like my my goal of it um but uh, in, in hopes that maybe it'll inspire other people to you know move here oh, that's my real goal but um but also to uh to show that they're not alone because i used to feel alone i used to um when i was uh in chicago there, there's not a huge liberty community that there is but um not to where it's it is here or all, other parts of the country i know texas has a huge um uh, liberty community as well and uh I was always uh, paying attention to all the different Liberty media out there and stuff like that. And for me, it's kind of just paying it forward. Like I know there's other people out there that, you know, they think that they're, they're by themselves in whatever city they may be living in or whatnot or a rural area where there's, not that, there's no one else around them that really thinks the way they, that we think. And at least something like this thrown out there, they may find it. And at least they know that they're not alone in this world the way that they're thinking. You know, that's kind of like my my goal with it. Like back in California, I had to create whatever like liberty events I wanted to go to. I had I had to be the one to start it. It, yeah. was, it just it was so hard. It was like um, I don't know. It was just everything was like slow and to to start up any group I wanted to do. But here it's it's a lot different in that it's already happening. It's already going on. There's a, there's something going on every day. And um, what's what's that's refreshing. What's the community <laughs> like uh, back where you, where you live? You know, th- there's there's some good people. You know, there's a lot a lot of a lot of good people, but there's not a lot going on. Hmm. You know, I mean, what Indi- Indiana doesn't have uh, as many problems as a lot of other places do. You know, I mean, it's an open carry state, no homeschool regulations, that kind of stuff. Oh, that's cool. Um, so so there, uh, but you know, I, you still you have to sign waivers not to have your kids vaccinated at the doctor's office. You know what I mean? I actually like <laughs> I read the waiver and it said uh, I recognize that I am endangering my child's life by not having this vaccine. Oh. And wow. I was like, I'm not signing this piece of crap. And I said, you need to black this out and initial it, or I'm not signing this. And they did, you know. <laughs> but but imagine how many people just sign it. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know. But yeah, and you're 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 acknowledging with a signature that you believe you are endangering your child's life. You know, that like this is just the, the status mentality. Like people are so indoctrinated into the systems that uh, you know of, of control, they don't even they don't even question it. It's just it's just part of their job or part of what they do. That it's like. The folks at the, the the TSA, for example, like in, in Indianapolis, like the guy was I, I I always opt out of the machines, and he says, you know, can I just ask you why you're opting out? And uh, and I I told him I said it's a violation of my of my rights and my privacy, and he started laughing. And I said, you know, like do you realize that every time you put that uniform on, like the, the very the Constitution you swore to uphold and protect, you are violating it every time you come to work. That your job itself is a violation of the Constitution, you know, and and they 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 can't even hear that. Yeah. It, I, whenever whenever I travel, whenever I go through the TSA, I always opt out as well because I take that as a small I only have like a minute, minute and a half when I'm there, you know, sexually molesting me. Um but you it's do outreach, right? It's, I do outreach. <laughs> I, outreach I, I look at me too. I look at the, the overweight guy with the rubber gloves standing in front of me and I look at him in the face. I'm like, you know, do, do you enjoy, you know, molesting people in the airport? Do you enjoy violating the Constitution, violating my privacy? Do you want me to come to your house and do what you're doing to me right now? Like, do you feel yeah. like you're doing it? Like, trying to, and I, throw, I try to throw freedom stuff in there. Like, maybe you should, you know, quit your job and find something that's benefiting the community because this is not, this is not good. You're not doing good Oh, but work. no, 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 no. They're keeping you safe, bro. Come oh, on. Oh, yeah. Just Clinton. be a good slave, Robert. Be no. a good slave. No, no. I, You're making I, it tough on the rest of us, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, I, I always try just to 
put you know is they're not they're a human being so i mean they i'm hard i'm hard on them though yeah but sometimes people need tough love you know i'm not i don't i'm not trying to be mean to them because i i hate them as a human being i don't but i feel like they need to know what they're doing is upsetting me and sure. upsetting other people and most people just go along because that's what they're told to do and you should never do what you're told to do you should always do what's right um and uh, i just always use that opportunity just to just uh, maybe I'll wake someone up. I have no idea, but at the end of the day, it's my one little like minute of activism I can do with another human being when they're right in front of me, and they can't leave. Sure. I actually had one person like you know like get verbally like physically upset with me, and it's like, well, I can't continue if you keep talking. It's like, so you're gonna violate my first and fourth amendment, right? Because <laughs> you're just you're just violating the you know the fourth right now. You really want to do the first as well? And then he like even. He then he had like wa he walked away and then came back like he had to collect himself. Wow. Sure, yeah. I had a similar experience. I had a um, TSA agent who was clearly recently ex-military. I mean, clearly, really believed in his job, and uh, and I was doing the exact same thing. And I was talking to him about nine eleven being an inside job. I was talking to him about this and that. He was he got he got so upset he got nose to nose with me, and. And was basically threatening me and, and, and said, you know, you're crossing the line, sir. You are crossing the line. And I looked at him and I said, you crossed the line this morning when you put on that uniform. <laughs> oh, nice. Snap. Wow. How did he react to that? Oh, he, we, we had to bring a supervisor over to kind of break it up. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I said, you need to control your, your, your officer here because he's, he, he, he's prone to violence. You know, he's, he, he, he's basically threatening, threatening my person, you know, because I object to what he's doing to me. You know, I, I, I said, if you if you if, you're, if your guys can't control themselves, they need to be the, the hell out of here because, you know, and, and, and the guy, the guy was just like, yeah, yeah, I agree. You know, he, <laughs> he was kind of he was kind of a stoner. <laughs> what can you do? I mean, like the agents of the state are still human beings underneath the uniforms. But, you know, with in the, the case of the TSA, if they did the exact same thing to you without their uniform on out on the sidewalk of the airport, they could be arrested for it. Yeah. It just so happens when they put on that, that uniform with that shiny badge, they magically have immunity for, for committing crimes against people. And, and, and this is what the state is. It, 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 it's just a, it's just a, a control mechanism. And, and, and I as soon as you give someone a little bit of power, a little bit of authority, all of a sudden they're demigods. And you, th and th there is no questioning my authority. Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, we had, a, we had a cop pull us over in Maine uh, a couple days ago, came up to the car just angry, just furious. You know, he had, he had almost run people off the road four minutes early. But he did this. We watched him do this U-turn, and he knew, literally ran two cars off the road. And then um, he he pulls us over for a seatbelt thing. And you know, my driver was kind of clueless and didn't have his license with him, didn't have registration. <laughs> Made him even more angry. He asked me for my ID. I refused to give it to him, and he just couldn't believe that I wouldn't give him as m my identification. You know, it was just like how. How, how dare you not give you my give me your identification? See, well, for here because so many people do cop blocking and whatnot in Manchester, and whatnot. I had a similar experience where I had a passenger with me, and uh, we were traveling, um, taking her home, and I got pulled over because I didn't have I didn't have my piece of metal front plate on the bumper. It was on it was up in the window. Oh my god, you know. So um, he he pulls me over and he wants both of our IDs. And I'm like, you, I'm legally bound by law to hand you this identification card, but I am not giving you my passengers. You have, she's not driving. You have no reason to, to take this whatsoever. And he's like, well, what we're supposed to ask for. I'm like, no, that's not true, and that's not that's not legally required. So here you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, but here though, they're kind of. They're used. They're used to. They're to, used they to, they're that. Used they, to they you know, domestic they, terrorists. They they know that. <laughs> they're like, okay, I'm not gonna mess with this guy. And he's just like, cause I I I have Liberty stickers on, you know, bumper stickers on my car and whatnot. They so know like, what they, they're getting they, into. They do when they pull you over. As soon as they pulled me over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They they figured it out. So they did, he didn't like argue about it. He's like, a, he just shrugged his shoulders and just took it. But that's kind of he, he's evaluating. Here. Is this really worth my time? Yes. <laughs> and the paperwork. <laughs> I did. I did get away without a ticket. So that. That, right that did work, right yeah, on. yeah. Right. But um, yeah, th at least here they kind of have an idea of like the re I guess resistance or like people standing up to well, them. Well, you guys are showing them, you know, who the real boss is, and that's great. Yeah, yeah. We need to see we need to see free state projects in every state, you know. <laughs> well, I, I, I would love to see more more people move here, but I would love to see other communities being built around the. Country. It's happening. It's yeah. hap I'm seeing it. There's there's a there's a great uh, community in Texas. S speaking of Texas. All right, I know you know uh, Murdoch Biscotti. I do. He's a good yeah, friend. He's amazing. Yeah, I've been, he is. I've been, I've never met him in person, but I've been in contact with him for like two or three years at this point. Like, yeah. like he's a great guy. He is. Um, 
Are you ever going to tour Texas anytime soon? I just did. I did a tour in Texas in, uh, in August, and okay. I was just down there in Dallas a few weeks ago. Um, and um, I go down there all the time. I'm, yeah. yeah I, I, I did a, I did a, I, I had actually had, I, I have a radio show myself called Page Against the Machine, and I just, he was actually one of my first guests on my first show. Nice. Yeah, awesome. so yeah, Murdoch's a good buddy, and he's done a lot of great work with Don't Comply. Oh, yeah, Don't Comply and the and whole open carry yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. He's, it, he's doing great work down there. But if you see him, next time you see him, before uh, June, do me a personal favor. Sure. Tell him to get his ass to Pork Fest because he's never been to Pork Fest. I will do. All that. right. <laughs> he needs to be here to come to Pork Fest. Like he, even if he never moves to New Hampshire, whatever. He do, he's doing gr- you know great work down there, but he needs to get to Pork Fest. Done. Thank you. How Done. many Pork Fests have you been to? Because five. I mean, I've been to five. five. Yeah, I started going wow. in 2010. So it was 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Um, I've been, I've played at uh, at at all at all the ones that I've been to. It's just you know. These are my people. I love these people. You know, this, this is this is this is the community where it's like nothing I say goes over anyone's head. <laughs> right? It's everyone. They're just sponges, and 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 it just uh, you know it's just an amazing, amazing uh, you know opportunity to be around like-minded people. No matter where you go, you know, a, a, you either know everyone or every single person you meet can be a new friend like right that minute. I also you know I love the fact that I can I can live for a week on Bitcoin. You know yeah. that makes me really happy. I'm a big Bitcoin enthusiast, and you know I, I don't I didn't use one uh, one FRN the entire week. It was all Bitcoin, and I just you know not, nothing better than that. Nice. Yeah, I, d- I did the exact same thing. I I I had to go to a couple of different vendors that didn't accept vi- uh, Bitcoin, unfortunately. But I did the same thing. I, I lived the entire week e- using nothing but Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah. I, I paid for all my meals with Bitcoin. This last one. I heard the next pork fest you're going to be able to do that with Dogecoin. So that's that's really exciting. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all about some alternative currencies and uh-huh. undermining the power of the Federal Reserve. It's good stuff. There you go. All right. So you wanna wanna hit us up with uh, another song here? Yes, I would. Can you bring my my yes, vocal mic up absolutely. just a little bit? Absolutely. And I'm gonna bring my guitar down a little bit too. Okay. The guitar is probably what was making it uh, peak out. Okay. Is that so good? yeah, this is great. Okay. So this is a song called Sedition, and Sedition is defined as a subversive act of rebellion against the established authority. So that sounds pretty damn good to me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, uh, you know, I was thinking about all the things that are contributing to this situation that we have with er- eroding freedoms. And, you know, I, I, I broke it down to, you know, a big five, not the only five, but a big five, which, you know, you have the military industrial complex. You have the, you know, the blind nationalism that's associated with that and flag worship and and all that and, and the acceptance of imperialism. You have the banking cartels and, and, and how they, you know, they fund you know all the imperialistic activities that that we do that our that our government does you have the the mainstream media and they you know perpetuate the buffet of lies that everyone eats from on a daily basis from the trough and then uh, you have the indoctrination centers that the, the public government school systems now that are worse than ever with with the you know nationwide implementation of common core um, you know these are all just planks of the communist manifesto i mean this is just like verbated like th- th- this is the plan um, and then you have, and, and, and to top it all off, you have the the disbelief of the American people. They don't even think this is going on. Yeah. They don't even recognize it. It's in front of their face. It's affecting them personally, and they don't even see it. And so, uh, you know, I asked the question in the song, you know, um, you know, won't you consider the notion that things are not all what they seem? And uh, when blindness is a vision, slavery is your religion, and there's no waking up from the dream. So this is called sedition. <laughs> Here's to the flags that cover our soldiers Whose stripes run red with their blood For young men will die in an endless supply While the real killers hide from the flood Yeah, here's to the flag, a symbol of conquest An empire of violence unfurled I'll not pledge or applaud, save only to God, as I grieve for the pain in the world. But you won't consider the notion that things are not all what they seem. For when blindness is vision, slavery is your religion, and there's no waking up from the dream And here's to the bankers who rob every nation With counterfeit
stupid paper deceits And their crimes are well hidden Their records forbidden And the poor always shoulder the heat Yeah, here's to the banksters Who silence their critics They hold all the cards in the game At first you will deal And then you will kneel For your debt's nothing more than a chain But you won't consider the notion That things are not all that they seem When blindness is vision There's no waking up from the dream And here's to the giants of false information Who lead populations astray As they blind you with fiction and dark contradiction And send common sense on its way The sellouts to corporate enslavement, the best liars money can buy. They're the voices for war, the establishment whores who parade honest truth as a lie. to your sway and here is the lesson we learn as it catches up with us today now here's to the centers of indoctrination controlled by the power elite where you're taught to be numb blind, deaf, and dumb, and prepare to accept your defeat. Oh, I warn you, disinterested, wayfaring children, born to the chains that you bear. For the gallows are high, and the hour is nigh, as you march to your So for me, like I, I came down the, the truth or movement to this. And I know you go through like a lot of different uh, circles. You I know, do. You, you do. You, you travel a lot of different ones. Um, and a lot of your lyrics, it feels like you, you came from some sort of truth or side at some point. Oh, 100%. I mean, I was like, there's, an, there's this program called LimeWire. It's like a file sharing program. If you guys remember this, but yeah, it, it yeah, got, yeah, it remember, got yeah. shut down. So I would download movies from this program. And, uh, you know, I'd like, you know, whatever movie was out that I wanted to see. And it would be a 9-11 Truth movie disguised as 
the movie I was trying to find, and I was just like, "What the hell is this crap?" <laughs> and I just delete it, and you know, try to try to weed through the ones that weren't nine eleven truth movies. But I was, you know, I I, I got uh, I got into some, some some Alex Jones stuff, and he he was talking about it, and then I saw um uh, the, uh, the the second portion of the Zeitgeist film, um which is uh, it's like a thirty minute piece on nine yeah. eleven, it, and it's and it's it's very well done. Uh, it, it, I think it really encapsulates the argument, like like the main arguments, pretty pretty well, and that totally blew my mind and and and, and I, I came to the conclusion geez if they're willing to do that then they're willing to do anything yeah you know and, and then i learned about building seven and building seven for those of you who are listening who don't know and i doubt there's anyone listening to the show doesn't know i can't believe there's anyone, <laughs> anyone listening that doesn't but. <laughs> but yeah but it's like a 47 story skyscraper comes down into its own footprint faster than free fall speed was not hit by a plane explain this you know, pe- people. Most folks don't even know Building Seven existed. You yeah. know, th- it's not part of the narrative. Um, and you know, I, I think it's like the the issue. I mean, you, you we can get into all the stuff about Israel and Bin Laden and the Bush family, and they, you know, that that's all like the the, the minutia that's like supporting evidence. What you need is some is somewhere to get started. And for me, it's like it's Building Seven is just so obviously the the thing. And uh, and I got really into 9/11 Truth, and I still am. I mean, it, you know, it's it's a it's a it's a daily thing. I've introduced people to the liberty the liberty of philosophy through Loose Change as well. I mean, it's a very powerful film. It's it's a definitive work on the subject, in my opinion. I mean, there's lots of lots of 9/11 you know Truth documentaries, but you know, Loose Change is a, is a is a is a very palatable one that that most people can watch and and they can get something from it. I know a lot of people in the liberty well, not a lot of people, but there's a there's at least a decent portion of people in the liberty community that are very anti against like the you know the truthers and stuff like that for some reason or another. I mean, I come from that background as well. Going, I mean, everyone has their own journey to mm-hmm. getting to this point. Sure. Um, how do you relay like liberty to like people that haven't they, they they've woken up in the point that they know that uh you know there's something wrong like they saw 911 uh you know truth documentary of some sort or they're they're in that like conspiracy world for a while they're they're hovering around in this like area where like the, you know all these different conspiracies like how do how do uh, uh people in the liberty community like reach out to those people and bring them down like i came down from there i must you can feel like you came down from that like how, what's well, a good way how did way you guys come down from that right how, if you're both from that background i came down from just I, I never stopped researching. Like that that was my you know, I was sure. always kinda liberty oriented a little bit more conservative, but like I came down simply because I it opened my mind to like, okay, the reality that I know I don't believe it anymore. So I just kept searching for the truth. And sure. that's how I came down to this. I mean for, for for me it was just it was a year and a half of just hardcore research with a tinfoil hat firmly stapled to my head. Um, and, and and I had to sift through so much information to see what what do I really believe here, what what what's likely you know and I I, I was uh, I was helping my buddy Adam Kokesh out with his campaign for his uh, for for Congress back in '09, and I was out in New Mexico and I was hanging out with uh, Ernest Hancock. Do you guys know him? He's I, know, I know. Yeah, I've been on the show. Er, Ernie's one of my closest friends, and but but then I was just getting to know him, and he I asked him. I said, you know, we were having a private conversation. I said, you know, what's What's really going on here? You know, I, I, I said I'm getting all this information, and I just I'm trying to find out what's re- what's what's really going on. I said, are they are these people really trying to take over the world? Are they re- did they re- are they really doing all this crap? And and he took a deep breath, and with kind of a sad look on his face, uh, he said, "Let me tell you something. If they can, then they are." Yeah. And that just that just leveled the playing field for me. I'm like, okay, well then all then then, then nothing's off limits. No holds barred. If they can, then they are. That actually makes perfect sense to me, you know, because th- these these folks they don't have they don't have any sort of like sense of, you know, American patriotism. Or they're, they're they're not they're not like a lot of folks out there are proud to be Americans. There, there's this sentiment that you know American exceptionalism, like you know, we can do no wrong, or that we are the greatest country in the world. Well, b- b- by what criteria do you base that? You know, because most countries hate our guts now. They do. You know, and be, be, and and we, you know, I'm not out there bombing children, but my but but my taxes, which are taken from me at gunpoint, are contributing to the bombing of children. The fact the fact that we have not overthrown this tyrannical regime, you know, as as like the people have not risen up and overthrown this tyrannical regime, is is proof that we are our silence is consent. 
and, and, and whether we want to admit to that or not, it is. It, it's up, it, it is up to the people to hold the government in check, and we just haven't done it. And now it's so out of control and militarized that, like, I mean, it, 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 there's, there's so, so many layers of protection around it that, you know, what does the average person do? Well, the average person isn't doing much. You know, they're, they're, they're staying at home and, and watching TV and, 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 and uh, immersing themselves in their escapes and their gadgets. When folks like you know, everyone in this room, we're, we're, we're all, you know, obsessed with the truth and obsessed with making it, making it right because we cannot go back to sleep. We cannot walk away. Yeah. You know, I ask people this question. You know, this, is, this is my litmus test to see if someone's ready for, for any of this. I ask them, and I've done it many times, and I, I've been right almost every time. I, s I tell someone that, you know, there is an asteroid the size of Texas heading for the Earth, and it's going to hit the Earth in two years, and there is nothing that anyone can do about it. Like, this is an extinction event. Do you want to know? You know, And if they say no, they're not ready. Yeah. Well, I was, that kind of leads into another question I have. Um, a lot of people, sometimes they get burnt out living this lifestyle, living in this community and whatnot. Absolutely. You know, um, have you ever considered going back, and if you could, theoretically, hypothetical? Not a ever, chance. N you would never take the blue pill. You would no, never, never no go back into way. it and like, oh my God. just go back to sleep and just live your life with your <laughs> not, kids not and, a and not even worry about any of this. No, no, I am living my life with my kids. Well, I'm not I, saying I, you're I, not. I'm just simply saying like not doing all this. Just like, no, 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 no. I, I know exactly what you're saying, and and, and I'm I'm saying that I'm I am living the life that I am was meant to live that I want to live and, and 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 I am enjoying my children I'm enjoying you know my life and 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 this this calling this path has has, has took took my life from being you know this this wide to this wide it hasn't changed direction per se it's just encompassed so much more my life is so enriched by all the people that I've met the friends that I've made I mean like. It, it's like I, I've alienated my family in, in, in many ways and, and, and many friends that I've had for, for years. These relationships have disintegrated, but I have gained so many more meaningful relationships with people because of what I'm doing. And, and I, I know it's, it's, it's where, it's where you know, God wants me to be. It's, it's where I want to be. It's what I'm meant to be doing. Fall, going back to sleep, like th that, would, that would negate everything that I've done up to this point. And it's like, I'm I am in this for life. I, I don't have any other goals but to continue spreading the truth. I may I may have other things that I'm doing, but it's all meant to support this effort. How has living this for you've been in this for uh for a while, with six years you've been doing this, seven years? Uh, since since oh seven, yeah. Yeah, okay, seven years. How has living this lifestyle, living in this community uh, around the country, how has this changed you as a human being? Oh, it's just made me better. Because, you know, I I learned so much from so many people. And and when I first, like I've said, when I first started out, I was waving my constitution in people's faces. I'm not doing that anymore. I, I I have simplified my like what I'm trying to accomplish down to the most bare bare essentials, you know, to to make it you know easier for people. I, I'm trying to be a door opener, I'm trying to plant seeds, you know, Johnny Appleseed for Liberty, you know, just just plant seeds everywhere you go. If, if you're if, if no matter what you do, if you open your mouth, speak truth. Doesn't matter who you're talking to, just speak the truth. Because you never know what kind of ripples you're going to cause. You don't know how, where, where those seeds are going to fall, and they have to keep growing. You know, I'm not trying to, like, do anything to the liberty movement. I'm trying to create a culture of liberty everywhere you go. You know, that's why I don't care about all the infighting. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I, yeah. I, I support that because what you have, you have, you have people, you know, arguing about the best way to have liberty. You don't have statists arguing with statists anymore. You know, how, what's the best way for government to solve our problems? Well, no, there is no answer to that question. The, the question itself is – it, it negates itself, you know. I like the, the fact that everybody, you know, has their own idea about about what freedom is, and they're all we're all trying to get there, and we're you know we're arguing about about you know who 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 gets to, you know who gets to be the most free, or you know I mean it's 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 awesome, it's awesome, and I I want to see that grow and grow and grow. Uh, absolutely, like for me, like I'm not against like the I like the drama and the infighting that happens because. Let's face it. A lot of people that get into this community are very logical, but they're also um, they have very strong ideas, very strong um, positions on what liberty is. And you transform so fast being engulfed in the liberty community where like you you evolve as you, mentally so much faster Absolutely. than you did before you were outside of it. Um, so I don't take like the drama and like the debating and everything like that, the infighting. 
I mean, some of it's kind of, you know, uh, I wish it didn't happen, but at the end of the day, it makes the community stronger because you're, you're fine tuning where you are, where you're supposed to be, like, you know, where we all think. Cause I wouldn't be here now if someone didn't question me and someone didn't push me. Yeah. We need to be called out. We need to be challenged to, 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 to find the holes in our arguments, you know, and, and I, w the way that I see it all working out is that, you know, just like we've been talking about, Dr. Paul opened our eyes to this and that. You know, Dr. Paul was an obstetrician. He delivered 4,000 babies. Well, I, I argue that he, he delivered 4,001, that the liberty movement itself is, is, is an infant that, 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 yeah. that he delivered. He, he, he brought it into the world, and it's a baby, and it's falling on its face. It's learning how to crawl. It's, it's, it's got growing pains. It's, it, it doesn't have complete control over itself. You know, but as it grows and develops, it's going to have more and more motor skills. It's going to get it's going to start walking Then it's going to start running, you know, and, and as it grows to maturity, that, as, as, as we as, as a community grow and grow and grow and, and, and become, you know, more efficient at what we're trying to do, you know, it, it's going to be a formidable opponent to, to statism. Where do you see this going? The liberty community in general, like what, 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 what do you foresee uh, happening like next 10 years or whatnot? I, I I'm sorry, dude. I, I forgot my crystal ball. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I'm just you've been in a long time. You you you're one of those people that you travel. You've got perspective. You, on you have a better yeah, perspective than joking. most of us because yeah, you're just, you're you're going all around the country. You know, you're seeing you're seeing this firsthand. You know, yeah. on the boots on the ground type of scenario. Like a lot of this, like we're here. Uh, I travel at a couple of events from time to time, but I'm not like traveling the country like you are. So you have a better perspective than most people do. Gotcha. I I I'm not just joking. Yeah, I, I, know, I, I know. I am seeing some communities coming up with local solutions to cut government out completely. I think Bitcoin, it w I mean, Bitcoin is not just a local solution, but it, I think Bitcoin is a major part of the solution. You know, like un undermining the Federal Reserve is, is crucial, you know, because that is the source of the cancer, you know, that, 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 that's, that's funding all the programs, all the, all the, the violence of the, uh, you know, the ruling class and the enforcer class. I mean, w w without that funding and, and without them devaluing like the, the our, our currency and, and, and just crashing our economy. I mean, every boom and bust we've ever had since the, since 1913 has been caused by the Fed. I mean, so so Bitcoin is a direct assault on the the authority of the Federal Reserve. And I think that's a huge part of it. That's why I'm just I'm, I'm all about Bitcoin. Well, it's finally a tool that most of us have. Like we've always all of us here have been like end the Fed. You know, now we can actually ignore it because we actually have a tool that we can use. Like, we never had a financial tool. I mean, yeah, there's gold and silver, but it, it's it's hard to use that in, Gold you know, and silver wasn't cutting it. No, and it wasn't. And, and neither was Congress. Neither was, like, trying to pass a bill to, uh, let's audit the Fed. Well, okay, let's audit that Fed. Yeah, like, like that's going to be an <laughs> honest audit, f f first mm -hmm. of all. You know, I mean, the, 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 the Federal Reserve is, is a... It's, it is a dark and violent organization. It's not. It's not just like a, a just some big bank. It is a. It is an international criminal conspiracy, and like and and, and Bitcoin is the answer. I, I really do believe right. that. Um, but I'm also seeing people, you know, organizing in their local communities, and 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 finding ways around the state. I mean, like I said, there comes a point where the state will no longer let you ignore it. But yeah, and and some people are in that situation. And and but mo most people have the, like their doors aren't necessarily uh, not not, ev not enough people's doors are being kicked in yet, in order to to inspire revolt. But the but the folks at the top they know it's coming, and that's why they're stockpiling ammunition and weapons and militarizing uh, state and local police departments. That this is why this is happening because they know it's coming. I I foresee something very ugly happening in in, in, our, in our future, unfortunately. Um, but I think that the more organized and 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 um, and and conscious we are of what's happening, not ignoring the problem, but finding solutions for it. The, the better we're going to be. Like my goal is to organize and mobilize, you know, conscious, educated resistance to to statism and and, and to to the conclusions that it's coming to, um, be, because th they they have set up a uh, a demo a, like a, a, a dictatorship in in waiting. I mean, we we basically have a dictatorship posing as a as a democracy. Um, but all the continuity of government laws that have been passed since the since the mid '80s, uh, especially during George Bush's presidency and and well and Obama obviously too, um, have uh, like all they need is the right national crisis and boom, it's over. The entire the, the you know 
a- a- any hope that a- anybody had of like restoring the republic, so to speak, is 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 completely gone. The illusion is 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 gone. The veil has dropped at that point. But but when they choose to do that, who can tell? I don't know. Um, but but they they are planning for violence. Like like and and they know how many of us out there are willing to fight them. I mean they're they're aware of it. And that's why they're 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 making the moves that they're making. I have a good friend who is the owner of the largest um, uh, online. He's the largest online retailer of survival food and survival gear in the country. His his nearest competitor is three times smaller than him, and he got a direct call to his cell phone from a DHS agent asking him how much product of his could he ship within 24 hours to to the, uh, Homeland Security. They wanted to buy everything he had. We're talking millions of dollars worth of, of product. And he turned them down flat. He sent them packing. You know, like, if, if there's such a thing as a patriot, it's, it, it's that. Well, right yeah, there. he's turning away money because he's, th- and he's in it for the right reason, not exactly. because of the money. And all his competitors, they did take those calls, and they did shift their product, and they did make money. But he's doing so. I think I think his karma is, 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 is improved even more because he decided not to do business with the beast. They're preparing. They're trying to buy up all the long-term food storage. Why? All you can do is ask that question of people and let their imaginations run wild with it. You know, I have I have answered those questions in my own mind, and that's why we're getting prepared. That's why we're trying to you know get get somewhere you know beyond Indiana where we can be even more more free and more secure than we are. I mean, there's not going to be anywhere in in the United States that's going to be free from the state until the state collapses. Yeah. It, it, you know. A- a- and I don't know that there's anywhere else in the world that's necessarily going to be better than here either. I think that I think we don't have any chance but to stand and fight. That's what you do with a bully. A bully is going to continue to pick on you. A bully is going to continue to oppress you until you kick his ass. And that's what's that's what's going to have to happen. That's why I, that's why I don't leave because I don't like bullies. You well, know, it, I'm the same way. I mean, for me, like I can't I can't just leave because I feel like I'd be running. I, yeah. f- I feel like I'd be. Uh, uh, leaving the people I care about, you know, especially in the, co- in the community, but the people that live in this country, you know, even if this doesn't work out well, I'd be leaving all this behind, and I feel like I have to do something here. I have to, you know, it's my role. Yeah, Everyone yeah. has a role in it here, I got and you. this is my role. I, I, I have to say I have to do something. I have to stand up, even if, even if it doesn't happen, even if all this is for naught. You know, what if the state does really clamp down and that's the future that we're going to live? At least I know before I die that I stood up for, yeah. for, for this. Yeah. I always say, you know, everybody dies. So if some people didn't die and some people did, then dying would be a much bigger deal. And we only ha- you only have one chance to be you. You may be get born again as somebody else, but you won't know. So you have one chance to be you. I have one chance to be me, and, and, and I'm going to uh, – the story that my life is, I'm going to make it a good one. I'm going to make it worthy of remembrance. And so I, I, I refuse to submit. I, re- I refuse to go quietly into the good night, as they say. Absolutely. All right, so I have one song request before What's we – What's your request? Uh, uh, song for Bob Dylan. Oh, I would love okay. to hear that. Yeah. All right, right on. <laughs> So this this song is a, is a very special song to me, and it's been uh, it's been with me since the beginning. This song has reminded me several times when I questioned what I was doing, or whether I should try you know going in more mainstream or whatever. This was the song that that kept me on the right road, and uh, so I love this song. This was a, this was a song that that was was sort of handed to me uh, by otherworldly presence uh, I don't I don't claim to have really written the song it just sort of came through and I was I was because uh, I was vibrating at the right frequency where I could hear it okay. so it's just called song for Bob Dylan when you sound out a warning when you see signs in the sky But in the land of the blind it's a crime to exist with an eye 
and your dreams are in color, but your life is a pale afternoon. And the truth is a song, but the notes are all played out of tune. Oh, hey, hey, Bob Dylan, I wrote you a song. Cause I know that the answers we're searching for will be here for long. Well, you taught us that war is a sin and a sham and a shame. And the penance we pay for our silence is more. It's more than just taking the blame And the world is spinning far out of control We got storms in the east while the western world's selling its song how many times 
I've heard, I listened to that song before I was like going through my awakening. I'm like, I'm alone, like thinking about that song. Yeah. So right yeah, on, that, man. That, that, that was, that was, that was <laughs> an awesome. honor to hear you play that. Thanks. Yeah, it's yeah. an honor to be here to play it for yeah. you, buddy. Thank you guys very much. All right. So do you have anything to plug before we head out? Oh my God. I got so much going on. So, you know, I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be in Chinook Tuk t- tonight. How do you pronounce this? I have no idea. It's, <laughs> I don't uh, know how, how New it's Hampshire. It's, it's uh, you know, eight. Th- 849 Main Street, I think, uh, Chinook Took, New Hampshire. It's right outside Manchester. I apologize for all the people in Chinook Took who I am butchering the name of your uh, your town. I apologize. Um, I'm going to be in Colchester, Connecticut tomorrow. Uh, it's a, check me out on, on Facebook and see what the uh, see what the, what the address is there. I don't have it offhand. Uh, I'm going to be at the Avalon Theater in Easton, Maryland on uh, Thursday, November 20th. That's going to be a big show. And... Um, I've got. I'm, I'm planning a Southern California tour the first two weeks of December. Uh, you can g- get all this information at jordanpagemusic.com. Uh, I also have a radio show that you guys can tune in on uh, Tuesday nights from 7 to 9 Eastern called Page Against the Machine on libertymovementradio.com. And uh, I'm, I'm you know, still working on putting together the budget for the, uh, for the new album. Anybody wants to donate, they can donate via PayPal to Jordan Page, PayPal Jordan Page Music at gmail.com. And, uh, you know, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm touring. We're putting together a documentary slash concert film also. That's going to be really fun. My nice. buddy John, uh, John King is, uh, you know, he's, the, he's totally the next Scorsese, man. He's awesome. Awesome. And he's, uh, <laughs> I always tease him. I call him Scorsese. And, uh, and we're doing a, uh, he's been following me around for about a year, you know, filming me at different shows and, and taking, uh, doing interviews and taking testimonials from people whose, you know, I've touched the, whose lives my music has touched and. We're gonna sh- we're gonna do like a full length you know documentary concert film type thing and that's gonna be out early next year, so there's just uh, there's there's so much going on but yeah definitely check out uh, LMR and, and my radio show and and come and see me play and JordanPageMusic.com I'm also on YouTube uh, the same same handle Jordan Page Music and it's Twitter and Facebook it's D- all the same. Do you put the show up on YouTube? Uh, I s- a couple of them I have I, recently I, I had a show where I interviewed two American whistleblowers who were on the ground. Uh, in Tripoli, in Libya, when uh, when NATO sent Al Qaeda there to kill everyone, and they were actually captured by Al Qaeda, and they were in the oil business for a, for a long time, and they that's why they were there, and uh, they they were they were you know trying to trying to work with the Lib- with the with the Libyan government, and they um they they were they were able to escape from Al Qaeda, they get back to the United States, and you know th- all these different uh, government agencies came to visit them and take their their testimonies. And they were still in, 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 in contact with the Libyan tribal leaders. Come to find out, all the information they had given the U.S. government was helping Al Qaeda. They actually have physical proof that Al Qaeda not only was created by the U.S. government, but it's actually being run by the U.S. government. So the things that we've all suspected all along are true, unfortunately. And these folks, their names are James and Joanne Moriarty, and uh, and they're you know they're they're whistleblowers. They're but but my my show was attacked, cyber attack, two weeks in a row when I was w- trying to broadcast their interview. So, yeah, my account was suspended from my server the first time, and then the second time I got 30 minutes of the interview per, uh, played, and then the entire feed just dropped, which never happens. you know. Yeah. And, and then they told me this happens almost every time they have an interview. So they're being watched. <laughs> I'm being watched. You're Whoa, being watched. Oh, I, I know I'm being watched, but at the same time, like they, they can come get me if they really want it. <laughs> oh, sure, yeah. sure. Well, they're trying to give us enough ropes to hang ourselves with. But uh, I, I'm, I, I feel like, uh, like knowledge is power and putting this knowledge out there. Like, for example, this um, – J- what's the journalist's name? Foley. Uh, was it Jeff or James? Um, I'm drawing a blank. You know who I'm talking about. The, yeah, the guy Foley. that was supposedly beheaded in that fake ISIS video. Uh, they, they said they knew him personally, that he was actually a CIA agent, that his journalism was actually his cover, and that, that they, he was killed in this video supposedly in order to – kill that cover and so he could go undercover and do some some of the stuff and that it was all fake it wasn't even him in the video it wasn't even a real beheading it was just, it was all done with a with a green screen and that th- they actually physically heard him calling in airstrikes uh, on his cell phone you know in the, they were in the same hotel with them with him and they knew him personally he was CIA they said almost every every journalist you see in war area in war zones are CIA agents that it's all just it's just, just it's a controlled message it's all made up and that everything that they attributed to Gaddafi killing his own people was all—they were all CIA programs. That Gaddafi was actually loved by his people and like took Libya from being the poorest country in Africa to the richest. Oh, I absolutely believe it. I mean, we—it's yeah. hard to believe anything that's even in the mainstream media at this point. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you can't. I mean, it's—it's it's disinformation. It's—it's it's meant to 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 put out a, a specific narrative, and it, it's just—it's just a big racket. And and you know, we we. 
I watch the news for entertainment value, you know, yeah. and, 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 to, and to see what the disinformation is so that I can go in the opposite direction. Yeah. Um, there's lots of great places to get news and, and, and to get information and, you know, just, just stay, stay away from the, main, from the mainstream uh, outlets because they're all owned by six corporations who perpetuate war indefinitely. That's, that's, that's what they want. Well, I just want to say thank you for coming on the show. It's oh, thanks a, for having me. It's been an absolute honor. Uh, thanks, guys. JordanPageMusic.com or JordanPage.com? JordanPageMusic.com. You Jordan can see my, my calendar and, and listen to songs and videos and you know, buy music. And so, yeah, definitely, you know, I, I appreciate everyone's support and, and just uh, you know, trying to stay on the road and keep the message rolling. There you go. So thank you guys for having me on. This was yeah. great. Uh, Shire Dude, where can they c- people find you at? It's all at ShireDude.com. All right, and I'm at uh, vrebel.com. You can find all of our show archives at rebelloveshow.com. Also, uh, go watch us on YouTube or subscribe to us on iTunes and Stitcher. That helps a lot for us, all right? And we are out, so uh, peace. Peace.